Hello and welcome to vlog number seven. In this one I'll be talking about upcoming videos and the projects that I'm working on at the moment and an interesting recent bin find. Some changes that I'm making to the format of my channel to bring you more frequent videos. Some new smart devices that I'm now using in the workshop to make things more efficient. My recent trip to California which included a visit to one of Rockler's woodworking stores. And Tool Talk featuring my new Ryobi cordless hot glue gun. As usual, I've included timings for each section of the video on screen now, in case you want to skip to the parts that you're interested in, and you can find those in the description box below too. What's new? Project-wise, I've recently finished this herringbone table. I'm calling this one an accidental table because originally I didn't know what I was going to be making, I just had lots of short offcuts of mahogany, and it kind of turned into this. That will be a future video. I've also designed and built a simple sanding block, which is working out really well. There'll be a video for that one too. I'm currently working on a large luxury dog bed commission for a client. This is similar to the dog beds that I made previously in a video on my channel, but with a number of improvements. And I'll be doing a video for that too, which will be focused on how to revise past projects to make them work better, which I hope should be interesting. As you'll know if you've been watching my channel for a while, I predominantly work with salvage materials and I had a really interesting bin find recently. 16 broken snooker cues which I found behind a communal bin. Very strange. Most of them have broken tips, a couple of them seem pretty usable as cues still so I'll probably give those away to someone who can make use of them but for the broken ones I'd like to incorporate them into some projects. I think they could make really cool tapered legs for a table. I've had lots of other suggestions from the people that follow me on Facebook and Instagram too so stay tuned for some snooker cue related projects. Business wise I'm far less busy at the moment than I was during the summer. In fact after this dog bed commission is done I don't have any other paid work lined up. So I'm going to take that as an opportunity to stock up my Etsy shop with some small Christmas gift type items and there might be some videos about those too. I've already listed some walnut coasters on my Etsy store which I made just after Rhea and I finished making the hexagon ones which were featured in a recent video. I made another set of hexagon ones and a couple of sets of square ones too and those are for sale now. By the way, if anyone watching is interested in commissioning me to make something, I now have a form on my website where you can get in touch. I've done a couple of commissions for viewers before, which were project videos on my channel as well, like a house sign, a bandsaw box desk tidy. I also sold the chess set that I made some time ago to one of my viewers via Etsy. Channel changes. It feels to me like my channel has quite a rigid format at the moment in the form of one video every Friday which is usually a build video and then a vlog video every one or two months or whenever I feel like I've got enough interesting stuff to talk about. The problem with that is that there are a few videos that I've really wanted to make which don't really fit within that format. I actually have a list of videos I've been wanting to shoot that don't really feel big enough for one of my Friday videos but also don't fit as part of a vlog video. So now I have more time to spend working on my channel having reduced hours at my day job. What I'm thinking of trying for a while, maybe up until Christmas for now and then we'll see how it goes, is making two videos per week. There'll be the main video on Friday and then a piece of secondary content maybe on a Sunday but I'm open to suggestions. Most of the secondary content videos will probably be short, under five minutes, and covering things like hints and tips, some workshop related stuff, possibly some YouTube stuff as well, and I can't promise it'll be every week, but we'll see how it goes, and if I run out of ideas, then I'll just revert back to one video per week. Smart Workshop. I've recently got one of the Amazon Echo devices for my workshop. I mainly got it to turn my filter on and off because the switch for it is on top, and as it's mounted to the ceiling, it's quite awkward to get to and to turn on and off. This is an idea I took from one of Peter Millard's videos over at 10 Minute Workshop as he has his filter set up in a similar way. If you're not familiar with Peter's channel, I'd definitely recommend checking it out and I'll leave a link to that in the description box. Both he and I have put out videos about this particular air filter and I'll leave links to those in the description box too. So anyway, now I can say, Alexa, turn filter on. Alexa, turn filter off. 
And I've found a few other uses for it too. I can now turn my air compressor on and off, which is outside of the workshop in my shed extension. That works via a smart plug, and that's useful because I don't use the air compressor very often anymore, as now I use cordless battery operated nailers. So I don't really want to leave it switched on all the time, and I can't always be bothered to open up the shed extension to unplug it or plug it in. So now I can say, Alexa, turn compressor on. Sorry, I didn't find a device named compressor. Device offline. Why? Okay, so I just realized that the power to my shed extension was switched off, so that wasn't actually the Echo Dot's fault. We'll try again. Alexa, turn compressor on. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking this up, but the compressor is now on. I can hear it firing up. Alexa, turn compressor off. There you go. I also got rid of my old Bluetooth radio in the workshop in favour of playing music on the Echo 2 and it's been handy for those occasions when my hands are full while I'm working or for when I want to film something I can quickly pause the music or turn the volume down without walking around the workbench or manoeuvring myself around my mobile camera stand which always seems to be in the way. So I haven't just got this out of laziness, it is actually really handy. Uh, play BBC Radio 6. Here's Radio 6 music. The BBC... Alexa, stop. Another use that didn't occur to me was getting the Echo to do maths for me while I'm working on a project. I posted a video to my Instagram a while back showing that I'd mounted a calculator to the wall so I can quickly work things out without unlocking my phone and opening up the calculator app. And someone called Pippa commented saying, why don't you just ask the Echo? Which for some reason never occurred to me. So thanks Pippa for that idea. Alexa, what is 173 divided by 7? 173 divided by 7 rounds to 24.714. If you have any suggestions about what else I can use the Echo for in the workshop, please let me know. I'm new to all of this smart home stuff, but I found it really useful so far and I'm keen to make the most of it. California. I just got back from two weeks in California and for the first couple of nights I was staying in Los Angeles and I realised I was staying pretty close to a Rockler store so I thought I'd pop in and check it out because in the UK there's just certain things that are harder to come by. So I shot some footage of some of the timber or should I say lumber that they stock and some of the prices too. Sorry for the lower quality of footage but this was all shot on my phone. They had some really interesting pieces of wood Loads of different species and stuff ranging from smaller blanks to bigger planks, sheet materials, small pieces of Baltic birch for under $10, which blew my mind a bit. This here is black palm, incredibly dense and very heavy. They also have some nice packets of veneer and this crazy zebra wood, which was beautiful stuff. I also bought four hand screw clamps. Again, these are hard to find in the UK and I've wanted some since watching Thomas Johnson's videos on his restoration channel. He uses them for awkward glue ups and they're going to be really handy for that sort of thing. And fortunately, I had enough room in my suitcase to bring them home. Also, a shout out to Nathan who was working there who recognized me from my channel and we had a good chat. It was a pleasure to meet you. And same for the guy at the checkout, although sorry I didn't catch your name, but you made me feel very welcome and it was great to visit the shop. So we did a big road trip and stayed in Los Angeles, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Cambria, San Francisco, and then back to LA. And I won't bore you with the details of my holiday here, but if you're interested, you're welcome to check out my photos, which are on my personal Instagram account, at Keefe, Keefe which I'll put on screen. This is a separate account to my woodworking account, which is at Rag and Bone Brown. Just to warn you though, my photos are mainly of birds and quirky concrete buildings because that's just what I like taking photos of. And one more quick shout out to Mahir, who I met on the streets of San Francisco. Just in case you're watching, it was good to meet you. Tool talk. So other than the hand screw clamps that I mentioned earlier in the video, I've just got one new tool to talk about this time, and that is the Ryobi hot glue gun. This was sent to me by Ryobi, so I didn't pay for it. I've been looking for a cordless hot glue gun for a while, but the options have been really limited. 
The Ryobi was the only one that I found that had a decent capacity battery with it. And there are some others by Bosch and Stanley and a few other brands, but they all seem to be criticized for the batteries not lasting very long. And the Ryobi, from what I've seen, seems really well regarded. It has great reviews. Now, I've not had great luck with Ryobi's tools before, to be brutally honest. I bought their belt sander, the EBS 800, a couple of years back, and it broke beyond repair after only three or four light uses but it was just outside of the one year warranty. That actually happened in one of my videos, but I forget which one it was. I really hope that this hot glue gun lives up to its reputation. My old hot glue gun was this one by Cronova, which I bought on Amazon a few months ago, but it stopped feeding the glue sticks properly, which means I have to kind of feed the stick through with one hand while pulling the trigger with the other. And that got really annoying, so I'm happy to have this one and I'll let you know how I get on with it. The downside is that now I need to find space for a third battery charger alongside my Hikoki and Makita ones. But hey, first world problems. I thought I'd just quickly give some first impressions of the Ryobi hot glue gun because I've just used it for the first time. It heated up quite quickly, it took around two minutes for the glue to be flowing properly. It feels pretty good in the hands, it's quite heavy but I expect most of the weight is in the battery. The handle is quite thick and beefy but it's not a problem. I was quite impressed to see that the Ryobi OnePlus system has a battery level charge indicator built into the batteries. That's not something I'd necessarily expect from a more budget kind of DIY range of tools like the Ryobi OnePlus system. It has a solid brass tip which is nice, although it does drip in between uses when it's standing up. But every hot glue gun that I've ever owned has done that. This is my fourth hot glue gun. I had two Stanleys, then I went for the Cronova and this is the fourth one. Mainly though, I'm just really excited that it's cordless. I don't like corded hand power tools and I've explained my reasons for that in the past. And I also really like that you can just put it down without having to rely on some fiddly little fold out stand that never really work very well. Anyway, I'll keep you updated with my views on this tool in future videos. That's it for this one, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. And thank you for watching. So anyway, now I can say, turn the filter on.